Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Secrets to Plant-Based Living Summit, How to Use Food to Have Radiant Health, Mental Clarity, and Boundless Energy. I'm your host, Sandra Cotto, and I am bringing to you today 21 of the most influential doctors, authors, chefs, athletes, and coaches to help you understand what plant-based living looks like, what it can do for your health, and how you can transform your life to live more vibrantly. And today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Victoria Moran. Victoria Moran is the author of 13 books, featured twice in Oprah, and voted PETA's Sexiest Vegan Over 50 in 2016. She is the host of the popular Main Street Vegan podcast and director of Main Street Vegan Academy, the exciting week-long intensive in New York City that trains and certifies vegan lifestyle coaches and educators. Welcome, Victoria, to the show. Uh, thank you, Sandra. It's so nice to have you here. So tell us a little bit more about you and some of your accomplishments. Oh, my goodness. Well, when you've lived a long time, it feels like the accomplishment list grows, you know, and the regrets list. You know, I think we all have things and look back and think, wow, if only I knew when I was 38 what I know now that I'm 68. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we know it today. So that's all good. Yeah. I was um, born in Kansas City, Missouri, a place that has a state named for it. My dad was a diet doctor, and he and his, uh, my mom for a time had a, um, what they used to call a reducing salon, where ladies would go and kind of be jiggled and <laughs> shaken around, and, and their excess weight was supposed to float off into the <laughs> stratosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. I went there a lot. It didn't, didn't help me, so I, I was an overweight child. And it was really difficult in my family circumstance. I was put on a lot of diets, and it's really interesting. You know, nothing is really lost in terms of life experience. And what I see is that all these diets just keep cycling through, even now. And some of the ones that my dad brought me from medical conventions back in the 1960s, we're now calling, you know, Atkins and Keto and all these things that are, you know, supposedly new or slightly new. And they're not. So when I became vegetarian for the animals, uh, when I was 18, inspired by yoga, inspired by love of animals, that was a wonderful soul shift for me. It didn't change my food addiction. But ultimately, over time, through a 12-step program, through really working on my inner, I got a handle on what was going on with my needing to eat for a fix. And once that was taken care of and I had choice about what to eat, I chose to be vegan, which I had wanted to do for a long time. Now, a lot of people listening say, oh, well, vegans, vegans eat junk food. You know, not back then. We didn't have any junk food. I mean, potato chips existed in the world and Coca-Cola existed in the world. But basically, in terms of all the things that you can eat vegan now that we would consider not so healthy, the donuts and the pizzas and all that, we just didn't have them. So back then, when you went vegan, you also got healthy. So for me, the combination of having peace around food so that I could really eat three meals a day and then get up at the end of a meal and not have to continue it on through the night and eating plants have given me 35 years of freedom from overweight. I don't have any of the health concerns that people in my family had before they were the age that I am now. And I don't take any pharmaceuticals, which is also every time I have a birthday, I think it gets a little bit more unusual to not be taking anything from big pharma. That is fantastic. That's an incredible journey. Yeah. And so you mentioned that, you know, being on a vegan diet or a vegan lifestyle, plant based, you really don't have to worry about dieting, right? Because you basically eating whole foods and you can eat so much more of that when it's coming from its natural state, right? Yeah, it's really true. And, and I think I'm not, I don't care for that term plant based because it doesn't have a meaning that people agree on. So mm. I was looking on Quora yesterday and somebody was saying, why has the AMA asked hospitals to go vegan? 
And the person who answered said, well, they haven't asked hospitals to go vegan. They are recommending plant-based. And plant-based means that you base your diet mostly on plants and you can have some animals too. Well, that's one person's definition. And somebody else's definition is, no, it is vegan, but it's also no sugar, no oil, no salt. So whoever you talk to, you don't know what it means. But when I talk about a healthy vegan diet, mm -hmm. a whole foods plant source diet, I'm talking about that you eat almost all the time vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts and seeds, whole grains. If you eat grains, some people don't. I think you can get by fine without them. And you know what? Maybe you do try the fancy new burger one time, the veggie burger, just to see what it's like. But you sure don't have that kind of stuff as, as your regular day-to-day -day kind of fare, or you're going to end up with some of the same kinds of health problems of people who are eating the beef. Right. I agree with you. And do you think some of these, you know, there's a lot of products out there now. So you went vegan way back in the 80s where uh, yeah. a lot of this stuff, a lot of people didn't even know what the term vegan meant, right? I know. Right. I and one of the things <laughs> you said, you know, probably the one thing I regret is not going vegan sooner, right? I wish I would have known then what I know now. But again, we have our journey and we're here now and I'm, I'm glad to be in this in the same space as you. But um, do you, what, what is your take on some of these, you know, faux meats, yeah. the different burgers, and, you know, we've got all these different brands out there, Gardein and Daya and these substitute cheeses. What do you think about some of those products for those that are trying to transition into this? Sure. Life, really quite a, kind of don't know where to start. What exactly. I think they are fabulous and I think they are changing the world and I celebrate them and I'm thrilled about them and I'm waiting for somebody to come up with a really seriously good scrambleable non-egg. So, you know, hooray, hallelujah, God bless these people and these companies. Mm -hmm. May they change the world because we're looking at three things here. We're looking at human health and we're also looking at an ethical revolution where we're finally coming to see that non-human beings have rights, have feelings, have purpose. You can't have that, that knowledge that can't seep into your being and then you're also gonna eat animals. And we have a planet to save with animal agriculture causing more greenhouse gases than all transportation combined according to the UN and the World Bank. We've really got a shift. And those foods, those burgers and, and those sausages and all those foods yes. are really, really, really going to help that. And I am thrilled about them. Do I eat them? No, I don't. And I think that's one of the cool things about this lifestyle is nobody can tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's different for different people, different phases of life. I was being driven around in Chicago when my book Main Street Vegan just came out and I was on a big book tour that was partially uh, sponsored by Mercy for Animals and this lovely young Mercy for Animals volunteer was driving me and he said, I don't know why anybody has any trouble going vegan. I mean, if I want a pepperoni pizza, I have a vegan pepperoni pizza. If I want a chili cheese dog, I have a vegan chili cheese dog. And I'm thinking my arteries are clogging just listening to you. <laughs> You know, for him, he's 22, he's athletic. That's all great. You know, for me at my stage of life, I do lots of smoothies and big salads and wonderful steamed sweet potatoes and yellow bin potatoes and broccoli. And, and I like it. Some people would say, oh God, that sounds boring. No, I really, really like it. And it's appropriate for me for now. So you find out where you're at and you just fit yourself into this wave of the future, except you're doing it in the present. Yeah, I think that's really great advice, right? Because everybody's body works differently. And especially for those who want to explore this lifestyle, it's maybe good to start that way. And then they can find their way to some of these whole foods. And what I noticed when I changed my eating style is that my taste buds change. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't like before, I love now. Like yeah. I not really care for potatoes very much. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, I love potatoes and I love sweet potatoes, right? And so you get to taste some of the different foods you know, your, your lettuces that you can taste the difference because when you start eating cleaner, right, you can really get the taste of some of these foods and yeah. 
Yeah. And I think for people who are just transitioning, I mean, I remember when I first went vegetarian, I just wanted to know what to put on the plate where the meat used to be. And now, you know, I eat more bowls and things are all kind of mixed together. But then, you know, there was a place for the meat and a place for the starchy vegetable and a place for the non-starchy vegetable. And I didn't know what to do with where the meat went. And so, you know, all these wonderful substitutes go there. And that really helps people. And I think too, you want to read the labels on any kind of manufactured food product. I mean, the best foods don't have labels. The best foods are in the produce department and some of the frozen foods. But when you're, you're looking at the manufactured stuff, read them. What kind of oils are in there? Mm. How much of it? And there are great differences, particularly in, in the cheeses. You know, some of the cheeses are full of um, coconut oil, which mm. is a saturated fat. And the great reason why vegans historically have not had heart disease to nearly the degree um, that other people do is because the only saturated fats in the plant world are palm oil, coconut oil, and to a lesser extent, cocoa butter. And so if you're not having that stuff or not very much of it, then you're going to be really helping yourself on the cholesterol front. And I know some people are completely oil-free. They follow the teachings of Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. McDougall, mm -hmm. and some of these wonderful physicians who say no oil at all. But for people who, who aren't over there in that camp and people who are just transitioning, just read those labels. Just look at how much fat there is and how much saturated fat there is. And if you're looking at your two burgers, just take the one that's better. Great advice. Great advice. So um, how was it for you back in the 80s when <laughs> veganism was not so popular? How was it for you socially? Like, I know a lot yeah. of people ask me, like, well, what do you do when you go out to eat and everybody's eating a steak and you're having a salad, you know, and trying to kind of, I don't want to say, so to speak, fit in, right, and not be this, you know, person standing out. How was it like for you back then when it wasn't so mainstream as it's becoming now and popular as, it, as it's becoming now with the plant-based world? Of course. Well, in some ways, certainly it was more difficult because there weren't the convenience foods. So for example, now you can walk into any supermarket, any coffee shop, and you can get non-dairy milk. Well, in those days, you had to order white powder in a plastic bag from a guy in Ohio. <laughs> you just trusted that it was soy and not talcum. So some of those things were difficult. But something that was easier was because people didn't know what it was, people didn't have preconceived notions. Something just came out in uh, one of the news agencies that was saying, that, that the worst word you can use to describe a food, according to some um, survey that they just did, was vegan. Because I guess it makes people think like it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that and it doesn't have something else and it seems really punitive. But back in those days, people didn't know what it was, so they didn't have any opinions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think some people thought I was kind of crazy and some people admired me for having a moral conviction that I was sticking to, but pretty much they left me alone. And interestingly enough, even back in those days, the few people who did know about this were very often um, health professionals, medical doctors, because as far back as 1960, it had come out in the Journal of the American Medical Association that what they then called a pure vegetarian diet mm. could prevent 90% of the heart disease, 97% of the heart attacks. So for, for health professionals who had been paying attention, they knew even then that this was cool. They just had never seen anybody do it. Right. Okay, great. And so you have an acronym that you use for living yes. well. It's yes. MEND, M-E-N-D. What does this stand for? Uh, I love my MEND acronym. And I think if people do it, their lives are, are going to change profoundly. I also know it's not necessarily easy, but it is short. So I'll take okay. you through. This is about mending your ways and really deleting some of those things we ate or drank or did last week, 20 years ago. And I think it's very possible. So what we're going to do is M is for meditation, E is for exercise, N is for nourishment, and D is for detoxification. Do we have a minute to give to each of those? Yes, please okay. do. Well, 
Meditation is sitting quietly, watching your breath and focusing oftentimes on some kind of, of phrase or word, often a word that has no meaning, but just something to give your mind a point of focus. There have been over 250 studies in the past 40 years on transcendental meditation alone, which is a system where people do it 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the late afternoon or early evening, and they sit and they focus on a word or a phrase. There have also been a couple of hundred studies on insight meditation, which is one where you just sit and watch your breath. A little bit not... Uh, Western, you know, the idea of, oh my gosh, there's nothing going on. Right. And yet that system as well has, has shown lots of health benefits that you wouldn't expect. And my favorite study, and this one did look at TM, and that showed that people who had meditated regularly for five years or more were 12 years younger physiologically than people who didn't meditate. So wow. they were looking at things like cholesterol, HDL, LDL, body mass index, joint flexibility, hearing, vision, all these things that we think go south over time. But for the people who had sat quietly twice a day, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the late afternoon, they didn't have these problems. They could subtract 12 years from their chronological age. Mm -hmm. So I would strongly recommend that you look into some kind of simple meditation technique. If it sounds like twice a day, you just couldn't possibly, well then, you know, do it once a day. But it's very important to just kind of get that period when your brain waves are in that lovely alpha state, which is a state of healing and rejuvenation. So the next part of the MEND program is exercise. And I wish it weren't because I'm one of those people who loves reading and the theater and movies and conversation and drinking tea, <laughs> everything you can do in a chair. And yet, in an evolutionary sense, we have to give the body the signals that we are not decaying and then we won't. And so the biggest way that you can give your body the single signal that it's springtime and life is good and you're young and all is well is by exercise. And I'm talking some serious exercise, meaning 45 minutes aerobics, four days a week, two days a week weight training, and some yoga when you can get to it. But seriously, six days a week, 45 minutes, to somebody like me who doesn't like exercise, that sounds like so much, and yet it can save your life. And I do want to recommend a book about this. It is not okay. a vegan book. And something I don't like about it is they're always talking about how in prehistoric times we were out hunting. I don't think we hunted that much at all. Look at our puny little hands. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, otherwise, it's a really good book. It's called Younger Next Year. There's a sequel called Younger Next Year for Women, if you're a woman and you want the female version. Um, but it's by... Um, Dr. Lodge, and he has a co-author, but you can find it younger next year. Okay. And really motivate yourself to get 45 minutes, six days a week. It will change your life and maybe save your life. Mm -hmm. N is nourishment, which is, of course is what you're doing on, on this whole summit. And to me, it's not just about nutrition, which I think people think of as, you know, bottles at, at the GNC, mm -hmm. but really this idea of being nourished with foods that are colorful and inviting and amazing. And they all come from the plant kingdom. Plant kingdom, take your B12, you're good. And then D is detoxification. And that's because we live in a very polluted time. And we bring a lot of toxicity into our lives that we don't even think about. So for example, under your sink, do you have a toxic waste dump? If you're like most Americans, you probably do, just because the cleaning products that most people use are so harsh and so toxic. So if you can cycle those out and either just start getting the method or the seventh generation or some of the environmentally sound ones, which also happen to be cruelty-free, it's very interesting how these things come together. And you can also make all kinds of cleaners out of uh, white vinegar, um, uh, baking soda, 
and club soda. It's really simple. You save a lot of money, then you can buy more organic food. You also want to use the non-toxic um, toiletries and cosmetics. Again, the cruelty-free and the non-toxic tend to have a lot of overlap, so that's a nice thing. And you know, organic food when you can get it, and just eating low on the food chain, just not having the animal products is going to keep some of those poisons out of your body. But just anything you can think of that brings more nature into your life, so sleeping with an open window, not charging your electronic devices in the same room where you sleep because of the electromagnetic field radiation and just becoming more aware. And it's sort of like a little hobby. You'll find yourself getting more house plants because they clean the air. And it's just a really fun way to live. So you're preserving your life and enriching it at the same time. Thank you, Victoria. I love that acronym. So MEND, M-E-N-D, meditation, exercise, nourishment, and detoxification. You got it. And I love how the first one is meditation because that's something that has really helped me. Um, I use an app on my phone called the Insight Timer. I do too. <laughs> and it's fantastic because you can do, if you could just be quiet if you want, or you could do guided meditations. And my suggestion for people, you know, they said, but I don't have time for meditation. Even if you could just start one minute a day and just be consistent with that for a while, and then maybe mm -hmm. add on a few more minutes and be consistent with that and add on a few minutes to that. And then eventually you'll find that, I know for me, I can't go without my meditation. It gets yeah. me centered for the day. I set my intention and it just, it just makes me feel so much better. And then all the benefits that comes along with that, you can't, you can't deny that, right? Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. And one thing that's interesting, having the insight timer is I have to have so much discipline that I just go to my phone and I click on insight timer and not like, oh, well, I should really see what's happening on Twitter and I should really look at my email. You know, we, we live in this highly stressed, everything is a potential emergency kind of time right now. I remember as a kid with my dad being a physician and back in those days, doctors were really on call. He was always calling his answering service and many, many times, we, you know, we would be on our way out to do something and he would have to go to the hospital. And now we're all like that. It's just, we're always, if people, if you don't answer your phone, then they'll text you and then they'll email you. It's like, I need you right now. Right. What for? Just to say hi. <laughs> and we've got to fight that. And so one of the great ways to do that is if you've got a meditation timer on your phone, it's about meditation. It's not about phone. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no. And it's great because once you get on that phone, it's going to suck you into all the different places. Right. And it steers you away from maybe getting centered and knowing, okay, these are my goals for today, or this is what I have planned. Exactly. That's a great acronym. I love it. So Victoria, in addition to writing books and hosting the Main Street Vegan podcast, you run a school for vegans. So tell yeah. us about that. I'm really interested in knowing about this. Oh, thank you. Main Street Vegan Academy started back in 2012. It grew out of my book, Main Street Vegan, and it is a training program live and in person, six days in New York City. Uh, it happens about five times a year. And you come here, you learn from an amazing faculty of medical doctors, registered dietitians, uh, vegan fashion designer, uh, animal rights attorneys, uh, and business people. And so we have a three-tier curriculum of vegan principles and then communication principles. So once you know all this stuff, how do you get it out to clients and audiences and others? And then business principles, because not everybody wants to become a vegan lifestyle coach or go into some kind of business, but many people do. And I'm very proud to say that among our graduates, we have uh, the Riverdale Cheese Shop, a vegan fromagerie in, in Brooklyn is one of ours, a uh, Cat Mendenhall Cowboy Boots in Dallas, uh, eco-friendly, vegan, custom cowboy boots. A couple of our graduates in Philadelphia are opening a convenience store called V Marks the Shop. And we've got all kinds of people out there in 24 countries now doing amazing things. Wow. So if you're interested in taking your veganism to the next level, just uh, drop in at MainStreetVegan.net, click on Academy and see if you think it's for you. 
Oh, fantastic. And is, it, is there any prerequisites for this? Can anybody yeah. just do this program? You have to be 18 unless you come with a parent and you mm -hmm. have to already be a dietary vegan. You know, we're not the vegan police. If you still got mm -hmm. some leather shoes and some wool sweater, you know, you're, you're going to take care of that in your own time. But I have had people apply and they say, well, I'm vegan except that I eat my neighbor's hens or I'm vegan except I have raw grass fed butter. And it's like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're doing all that. That is wonderful. It sounds like you have a great life and you're saving the world and the planet. Hooray. However, to be a certified vegan lifestyle coach and educator, you have to be vegan, meaning yeah. the animals are out of your diet. And, and whatever you do health-wise, it's very interesting how we kind of have the United Nations of vegans here. And we've got whole food, plant-based, no oil people. And we've got raw food people and Ayurvedic and macrobiotic and people who are animal rights vegans and they just want to try every kind of sausage and donut that's vegan that comes down the pike. And you would think that we would all be arguing with each other, but we don't. We come together mm -hmm. in this beautiful situation, small classes, 20 max, and, and we have all kinds of communication and love. And then the food that we have together is honoring the, the people who have more, I don't even want to say restrictions, more things that they choose to avoid for some very good reasons, we accommodate them and it kind of raises everybody up a little bit. Excellent. Sounds exciting. All right. Yes. I've got two more questions. <laughs> okay. And so one question is, out of everything that we talked about today and for our viewers, what is one thing you would like for them to get out of today's conversation that they could take back with them? That this is so magical and uplifting. Please, wherever you're coming from, don't look at this as some kind of diet. It's not. The word diet starts with the word die because that's what it feels like. This is not that. This is opening a door into vitality, mm -hmm. into a heightened um, ethical way of being in the world, into going to a farm sanctuary and getting to see these animals. And as one of my friends says, once you meet them, you can't eat them. <laughs> and it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful way of life. And if you're saying, well, gosh, I can't go all the way right now, that's okay. You, know, you just open the door. It's, I think of it as, the, as stepping onto one of those moving walkways at the airport. All you do is step on. It doesn't mean you're going to get all the way to your gate on that one walkway, but you step on. So maybe it means that you're going to try some non-dairy milks. Maybe it means you're going to have a couple of vegan meals a week or a couple of vegan days a week. However it works for you to transition, that's the way for you to do it. But make it an adventure, a grand adventure. Oh, that's fantastic advice. Yes, you know, when I went vegan four years ago, for me, the transition was mainly for health reasons because I had suffered a lot from allergies and asthma and going plant-based uh, really helped me to eliminate a lot of those medications. But what also happened to me was my mental clarity. Like I just saw the world differently. I had more compassion for animals than the first time in my life. I never really related, you know, that piece of meat on my plate to the animals out there. And once I eliminated that, it just, my mind became so much clearer and it just changed my whole way of being. And uh, I'm really, really happy that that was, you know, it all evolved, right? And, and then thinking more about the earth and like you mentioned before and, and the gas house emissions and all that. And, and the best thing I think we can do to help the planet is by eating less meat, going vegetarian or even trying a vegan lifestyle. So, and you're correct, it is a lifestyle. It's a way of being and a way of living your life that will bring a lot of joy and happiness to you. So thank you for that. And one other, that was a beautiful story, by the way. And also, don't worry so much about the people in your life. You know, don't be all policey on them. You know, like, you have to do this too. Right. You know what? They don't have to do it too. But you do it. And, and have this wonderful allowing and accepting. When I met my husband 21 years ago, he was a regular meat-eating guy. And within a couple of weeks, he actually became vegetarian because he'd never put two and two together, like you right. said about the meat on your plate. 
And that was all he was going to do. He, the vegan thing was just out there somewhere. And the health thing, he didn't care at all about the health thing. I mean, he ate white bread. I mean, he's... Right. But over time, um, he watched a video about a, a mother cow and baby calf being separated so that the mom could, you know, put the milk in the machine for human commerce mm. and, and the horrible separation. And that's when he started drinking non-dairy milk. And then over time, he, he got rid of all the animal foods, still eating junk food. And then he just woke up one day and decided that he wanted to be healthy for the rest of his life. And now he's mostly raw food, certainly whole food. And it's like, wow, you know, sometimes I think, how did you get to be cooler than me? But that's <laughs> how it goes or how it can go. Or you just right. fully coexist. But do this for yourself. And start now. Start somewhere. Not all the way necessarily, but uh, right. some, some of the way. It's all about taking the first step, right? It is. All right. And so one last fun question that I've yeah. been asking all my experts is if okay. you were on a deserted island and you were able to take one fruit and one vegetable, what would it be? Whoa. Okay. Well, <laughs> veg vegetable, I'm going to say cilantro. I know a lot of people don't like cilantro, but Love for it. those who do... The cool thing about cilantro, I mean, all dark leafy greens are amazing, but <laughs> cilantro actually works to get heavy metals out of the body. And we all have those. It's in mother's milk. It's just, it's really a sad thing, but there's mercury, there's arsenic, there's lead. And the cilantro, if you have a sufficient amount of it every day, um, it tends to help you detox those. And the fruits that I would bring would be wild blueberries. Mm. Wild blueberries are magical. Now, mm. cultivated blueberries are fine, but if you cut one in half, it's clear inside. So all of its antioxidants and phytochemicals are pretty much entirely in the skin. The wild blueberries are smaller and they're blue all the way through. An interesting thing about wild blueberries is that if they are burned to the ground, they'll grow back. You don't need to find the seeds and plant them. They come back and they come back stronger than ever. Nobody has cultivated them through all these thousands of years. And so they've learned to be strong and tough and all that is transmitted to you when you put wild blueberries in your smoothie. So I'm hoping that that desert island has some electricity. <laughs> I want to make my smoothie. Absolutely. All right. So blueberries and cilantro. Wonderful. I love cilantro myself. All right. And so, uh, Victoria, you are offering a free gift, which is the three steps to rocking a vegan lifestyle, which is yeah. here on our page. Tell us just quickly a little bit about that. Well, it's a wonderful PDF. It's all illustrated and it's got cool stuff in it. It has resources. It has recipes. And basically, it's very simple about first kind of changing your mind. Then what are you going to do in your kitchen to make this transition really practical? And then how are you going to take care of yourself? How are you going to treat yourself like a piece of porcelain so that you're doing something different? You're doing something new. So you've got to take really good care of yourself and be just lovely to you. Oh, it sounds amazing. Well, Victoria, thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing all of your wisdom. I hope that all of the viewers learned a lot today and are able to go back and take something to implement in their life. So thank you again for being here. And for the rest of you, please go ahead and watch for the next few days. We have an expert every day sharing some wonderful information. So tune in and don't miss out. We'll see you soon.